All right, this is Job 13, verse 4. But ye are forges of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Barak of thy how, Barak of thy how shah. Barak of thy how, Barak of thy how shah. Call her law, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh shah. I'd like to send a salute out to those brothers out there pushing out the truth. You know, because as we all know, we are living in the last seconds of this man's kingdom. Okay? All right, let's get into it. Okay, this is a strange commercial. <clears throat> it's an actual advertisement. You know, and it came across my feed. Now, um, you know, sometimes, hey, the most I just expose things to you. And, um, you know what we do. We got filtered through the script. scriptures called Law Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. Now, check this out. We're going to let it play. And we're going to see what's in it. Okay. They just putting it out in the open now. Yeah, anyone who say these people ain't who they um who um we saying they are, you out of your damn mind. Watch this. Hacking humans with nanotechnology may sound like a concept from a futuristic science novel or movie. But the truth is, it's not that far off. And it could be the next big cyber threat. How so? Keep watching and find out. Nanotech, a recap. Nanotechnology is any technological endeavor that deals with anything with a dimension of fewer than 100 nanometers. While the concept was first brought to light in the late 1950s, it wasn't until the late 1980s that technology advanced enough to actually allow scientists to work in such a small field. Nanotechnology has several applications, including food, technology, fuels, batteries, environmental causes, chemical sensors, and even sporting goods. The medical field is one of the most exciting for nanotechnology at the moment, though most developments are still in the experimental phase. With these developments comes the ever-present technological risk of hacking. Nanotech in humans. Building new muscle with carbon nanotubes is one such possibility. Scientists at IBM are also working on using nanotechnology to analyze DNA in just minutes instead of weeks to treat cancer patients with a customized treatment plan. We're also seeing the use of nanotech in chemotherapy or vaccines to target specific types of cells in the body where experimental nanosponges are being tested to absorb toxins in the body. Nanotech is also being explored as an early diagnostic tool to detect cancers and infectious diseases long before our current technology is able. Some ideas include a tiny device that gets injected into the body as a sensor or medical delivery device. This all sounds positive, but there's a downside too. Is it secure? Tiny nano devices are typically controlled by a program on a traditional electronic device like a computer, smartphone, or server, meaning they could be very hackable. Some digital security experts posit that a single nanoparticle in the body with its own processor could be hacked. But they also say that if someone had more than one particle in the body, which many treatments would require, a hacker could theoretically turn them into a network in the body, using the body's own systems to communicate and do their bidding. One of the most obvious and dangerous applications for biomedical hacking is ransomware. If a hacker took over your inner nanotechnology devices, they could demand a ransom with fatal consequences. If you're unable or unwilling to pay, you know, you seen what just came across my feed. I see more going on. That's why the most high gonna judge him too. You know. It can easily turn your body against you, and at the very least make you suffer or get sick, if not kill you. It may also be possible for unsavory characters to use nanotechnology itself against their enemies. Not only in hacking attacks such as inhalable particulate powders to treat lungs. Some worry this technology could be an easily weaponized delivery method for bioterrorism efforts beyond the hacking dangers. Getting infected with something could be as simple as breathing the air, taking a shower, or getting a regular vaccination from your doctor. Mitigating the risks. The most powerful thing that needs to happen to lessen the risk of hacking with nanotechnology is legislation to regulate the types and strength of security required on nanomedical devices and even the function of devices that will be allowed. Medical device manufacturers who wish to ensure that their devices are not likely to get hacked should do proper penetration testing. Though this area is still in its infancy, we can use the term nanomedical technology, nanomedical hacking, and others that truly describe what it is until something else comes along. The term biohacking sounds like the perfect term to describe hacking medical technology, but it actually refers to do-it-yourself biology. This is a self-improvement technique that uses diet, exercise, and mental techniques to hack the body to improve mood, health, and overall life satisfaction. 
neobiology may suffice as it generally refers to any new advance in biological technology. Nanotechnology and medical device hacking would certainly fall under this umbrella, but the umbrella is very large. Lastly, it could also fall under the Internet of Things label, but this is a broad term, so it doesn't exactly define it. Risk realism. Has there been a true case of medical device hacking? The answer at this point is not clear, but there have certainly been crippling hacks at medical centers. At this point, the risk seems to be mostly theoretical, though it's just a matter of time before black hat hackers pick up on what white hat hackers have been researching and trying to prevent. Some experts believe it's only a matter of time before something fatal happens involving the hacking of a medical device, and that only then will medical providers and legislators take this issue seriously. As mentioned before, penetration testing is one of the best ways to find vulnerabilities in medical devices and ensure that your products are as secure as possible. Alpine Security offers a full range of penetration testing, including in the medical field. If you'd like to be on this cutting edge field of security and technology, inquire within on our site. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You want to know what the oddest thing about this commercial is? It's not the commercial itself. It's the fact that they're advertising against things the men of the Most High, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, been saying for all these years. They're offering services against it. So see, conspiracies are no longer conspiracies. You're living in them now, okay? Because now they're conspiracy facts, all right? Plus, this commercial is over a year old. So they knew something, okay? Just keep that in mind. It's Isaiah 19, verse 3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. And they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards, okay? Yeah, this is this man's high-level wizardry, okay? There's a saying... They don't, in the uh, medical industry, they never really cure anything. They just treat it so they can collect a, a paycheck from you until you're deaf, okay? And this man's comment board on this commercial is on fire. I'm not going to say some of the things they're saying because you know you know how these people is now. You know, that's why we, yeah, we're going to have to find alternatives, okay? Bit shoot, odyssey. Um, rumble, you know, we're gonna just have to start going to different places, all right. This is a video from last week. I watched it, I knew I wanted to do something more on it. I just, um, you know, I just didn't get around to it, so it's kind of odd that I was able to um, find both of these videos at the same time, okay. Now, check this out, you know, shout out to Phil, too, you know. You know, these Karens, these, you know, they say Kevins and anything else they want to call them, right? Well, you got this idiot on a, a plane, and I want you to watch this video and just, what's wrong with him? Did he take the jab? But let's roll that clip. Like I said, everybody in my house, um, you know, they took the dip and dot. I didn't, okay? And everybody already know where I stand at. And I told them not to, okay? So, hey, however the most I do what he going to do, you know, I, I pray that I'm not a part of it. I'm part of salvation. But, um, yeah, you know, 
a- afterwards, everybody in my house it just started acting strange. You know, I mean, just bug the hell out, okay? Extra, just just extra angry energy, okay? I don't know what it's coming from. I have an idea, but can't say it, all right? All right, I got this one last clip I want y'all to see. I'm going to go and close out. I'm going to run this back one more time. opinion some people are already showing signs of being hacked okay so i'm gonna go play this last clip and i'm gonna close out okay people saying this stuff is in the water they saying it's in the air they saying it's in the food they saying it's pretty much everywhere okay now i know the most high got covered who he got covered you know but at the end of the day we got commandments that we have to try to follow to the best of our ability, okay? And one of them, at the seeing stuff like this, is surely not to deal with the dipping dot, okay? Because you know what they say. You're going to eat you some chips, and then you're going to get into that dip, all right? So yeah, and, and, and look at look at what's going on. Look look at the little um the little lighting and the little pulses that was in it. Okay, look at the lighting and the pulses that's in it. The little electrical sick charges in it. All right. Yeah, all I'm gonna say, man, is stay prayed up with stuff like this going on. We ain't got much longer. Okay. And look into this guy, uh, Rudolf Steiner. All right, I'm a water boy. He did an excellent lesson on it. All right, as usual, you know, he keep bringing that edification, you know. So um, hopefully you guys was edified. You know, like I said, I like to give a, a mighty salute out and double honors to those, uh, to the apostles and the elders of GMS. They've been talking about this for years, man. Look like things are right on schedule. Shalom.